Okay, First Chronicles 21, verse 8. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly. Okay, we just talked about the numbers. Numbering Israel, the census. Because I have done this thing, the numbering, but now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Now look, sin, iniquity, and foolishness. Look at David repenting. And we still haven't got the full draft of what actually went wrong. The Bible tells us he numbers where we learn in 1 Samuel that God is angry with Israel, that there could be a little pride with David relying on the people and not God, but it doesn't say. The actual census of people is not a sin. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David's seer, saying, so David has Gad, he has Nathan, these men are prophets, men are seers. Go and tell David, saying, thus saith the Lord. Here we go. This is God speaking. I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, thus saith the Lord, choose thee. Here we go. Number one, either three years famine, or number two, or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while the sword of thy enemies overtake thee. Number two is, I'll have the enemy chase you. I'm going to have them chase you just like King Saul did, just like the Philistines, the Moabites, maybe, maybe the Ammonites, people around you for three, this one's three months. You're just going to be battles and fighting and battles and fighting. That's the story that we know from the Bible already, the future of David with his own family and his own kingdom. But David doesn't know that yet. Right now, he's in peace. So let's have famine, number one. Or you can have your enemies, number two. Number three. Uh, or three days, the sword of the Lord Even the pestilence. Sword of the Lord. We see this again with Gideon. Pestilence. So, yeah, we know the sword of the Lord is the word of God, but it's also pestilence. Pestilence. In the land of Israel, God's angry with Israel, 1 Samuel 24, 2 Samuel 24, in the land, and the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ, destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now look at that destroying. We looked at the word destroyer, destroying before. A couple of nights ago, we we're talking about, you know, Satan did it. God did it. We looked at Satan. We looked at God. We looked at the angels. We looked at uh, Sodom, Gomorrah with Lot. We looked at the, uh, the book of Job. We looked at Exodus with the death angel. We looked at Apollyon and Abenin and, and, and Revelation, we see you destroy it. And we also look at the fact is that God also will do it when it's his own people as being a father over his own children. These are Israelites. These are God's children. These are God's people. Satan wants to destroy Israel. And God sends out the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, to punish his own people. And can be a destroyer. So, we have three things. Famine, your enemies, or just a pestilence. Now throughout, advise thyself what I would, what word I shall bring again to him, God. That's him. All right, David, this is what God said. You got a choice. Pick one. A, B, or C, one, two, or three, or however he said it. Now, now look what God's doing. You're speaking to the ruler of the people that God's angry with, 2 Samuel 24. Now, I've got to keep saying God's angry with them. That is the motive. It's not David. David is the leader. And David is putting forth a test right now, too, that many men would fail. Because look what he says now. And David said to Gad, I am in a great strait. I'm in trouble. There's a narrow way. 
Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord. David, you were given three options. Why are you coming up with number four? Famine, your enemies, or pestilence. Uh, let me fall in the hand of the Lord. That was not an option. And David makes an option, and God says, okay, number four, I'll take it. Because David's heart is right with God. This leader of a nation that God is angry because say, you know what? Pestilence. Give them pestilence, Lord, because, you know, it may not happen to me. You said in the land, and I may, may, it may not affect me, so go after the people. My enemies, well, if I choose that one, I'm going to be in great strait because I have a lot of enemies right now. As anybody who loves the Lord and wants to do right will. Now, I've been through a battle all those years with Saul. I don't want that again. Famine. Well, I didn't desire a good meal. I, I desire to, to eat, drink. <laughs> I didn't want, to want no famine there. I read about Jacob and how he went down to Egypt and all the troubles came to be there. And the best one I would probably choose would be the sword of the Lord, the pestilence, because that may not touch me. The famine, they'll touch me. My enemies, they'll touch me. But I'll take number four that was never offered God. How about you? Now let's look at the answer more. For very great are his mercies, God's mercies. God's, David is saying these three wonderful, great things that will happen that are terrible to mankind. David says, in his mercies. I am relying on the mercy of God. But let me not fall into the hand of man. And David says, if there's an option I have, family, famine, excuse me. Well, that's an act of God. Enemies, that's an act of man. And the pestilence is an act of God. He says, let me not fall in the hands of man. Why not man? Because man makes missiles. He makes weapons. He makes torture. He makes things to make other people plead and cry. And he's saying, God, you're merciful. You're long-suffering. You're patient. And man, he's wicked and vile. And we see that all through the Bible. Man's a sinner, and he's great at coming up with wonderful things to, 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 re, to relieve man of his sanity to make him un, un to make him in pain and suffering it's funny how we got great things of medical advancement today and yet there are still waterboarding there are still people in tortures today for their religion there are people who are being tormented by a loved one there are children who have been who are being wickedly beaten and and mistreated by their parents there are people out there who are being abused by the police. And listen, this is all stuff that's out there. In reality, yeah, there, there's brutality out there. That's man. And David looks at all these things as a leader of the nation of Israel. We're going to see in a moment. He's looking for Israel and saying, it's not just me, it's the sheep. So God, I choose number four where there's never an option to be chosen. Would you ever think of God saying, listen, he probably won't, but I'm going to give you three things. I'm going to give you three troubles, three trials, three tribulations. Would you ever say number four would be God without your mercy? David's got a heart for the Lord all the way through. So look what happened. The Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. God sends number three. He said he chose number four. Well, we're going to see in a moment. David said, God, I can't choose. God said, okay, pestilence. Upon who? Israel. The angel of the Lord destroying throughout the coast of Israel. 2 Samuel 24 told us that God's angry with Israel. David did not know that. David probably has the assumption Satan's trying to... Listen, when look at this fact here. Satan wants to destroy the nation of Israel. has been doing it ever since... Uh, Sarah and Adam. I mean, Sarah and Abraham. He's doing it today. He's trying to destroy those Jews. Right now, the, right now there could be missiles. Right now, there were missiles the other day being fired into Israel. He's trying to destroy them. And Satan would love to get that 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 uh, approval, but like Job. Let me go at him. Please don't put no. You know, no, let me have full charge. Let me do whatever I want. Don't put no exceptions to the rule, God. But that's what Satan would love. 
But when we read, when we're going to look at 2 Samuel 24 again, when we look at that, we're seeing that God's angry with Israel. David says, I don't know what to do, Lord. I don't know. So David relies on the Lord. And the Lord says, okay, I'm going to go after the children of Israel who I'm angry. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. And there fell of Israel 70,000 men. And with 2 Samuel 24, 1, that's the cause. God's angry with Israel. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem. Now we're going in David's backyard to destroy it. There's that destroyer. As he was destroying the, the, this angel, the Lord beheld and he repented him of the evil. All right, Lord, Lord's looking at this angel doing the work, and the, and the angel of the Lord is doing a great work. He's killing. And the Lord comes up and he repents. And we've seen the Lord repent. And that doesn't mean the Lord is a sinner. That means, you know what? I'm just sorry for what's going on. I, I need to change. I've got to stop. And I've got to change direction here. Of the evil. And it does not say sin. That is a thing. And I wonder what modern Bible is saying. I don't care what they say. But the uh, King James says evil. Evil is a consequence. You know what the evil here is? There are wicked sinners that God's angry with. 2 Samuel 24. Got to get that in there. God is putting judgment upon them. And you know what? Because of their sin, the chastisement and the judgment of God with the sword of the Lord and that angel is the evil. It's evil to the people. Their families are dying. Their fathers are dying. Their mothers are dying. Their children are dying. Their, their family are dying. The people are dying. That's an evil because they're sinning against God. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. And God says, you know what? Let's stop. That's what repentant means. Repentant means stop, do opposite. You're involved in the sin, stop, turn from the sin, do right. Now, God's doing right. I'm not saying he's doing wrong. But you know what? At this moment, this repent and this, this, uh, this repenting he has is what you will call a word long-suffering. Uh, you know what? It's enough death. It's enough. Maybe the other people see what happened. Maybe they'll get right. Stop it. Let's give let's give them let's give the ones that are alive, let's give them a chance to get right. That's what he's doing. That's repenting. That's the long suffering of God. That's the love of God. He could have destroyed everything. Let's watch. Read on. And said to the angel that destroyed, what was that word destroy again? It is enough. Stay now thy hand. We read earlier that there's an angel that destroyed a whole army. And when the rest of the army woke up, they behold, they're all dead men. That was one angel. This one's doing it with his hand. Remember Balaam and the asses, there's, there's, the, there's the angel of the Lord with a sword in his hand. This is, has the sword in his hand, the same angel. And he's killing the long suffering, long suffering of Balaam. Balaam, get right. I'm taking your head off and, and, and had the, the ass to be alive. Long suffering. This is all long suffering because God could. A moment. Jesus said, I could have called lead, 12 legions of angels. This is one angel. Can you imagine what 12 legions of angels would have done in approximately 33 AD, thereabouts? We would not be here today. And the angel of the Lord, there it is. The angel, that's Jesus Christ, stood. By the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Jebusite, that's the land of Benjamin. Jebusite is where Jerusalem comes from. So here is his angel. Here is Balaam in the ass again. Which we happen to see him stand with a sword and he's by a vineyard. Jesus speaks about a vineyard. Jesus speaks about a sword that he has. And David lifted up his eyes. And he saw the angel of the Lord. So there is Jesus Christ. Did David ever see Jesus Christ? Yes, no. Yes, no. He saw the angel of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ, but the, but the human form of Jesus, no. 
Now, now, now look at the rapture here. Stand between the earth and the heaven. That's amazing because the Bible says when the rapture happens, we're going to meet in the clouds. Now, from the clouds, we're going to have that general assembly of all those that are saved. From the apostles to the last person that gets saved, we're going to meet in it. Then we're going to go from the clouds to, on the way to heaven. We're going to meet Jesus. There it is. That's also Acts chapter 1. When the apostles are, are sitting there with Jesus and the two men come up and Jesus extended to the heaven, they look up and he's halfway between the earth and the heaven. He doesn't have a sword then. And the heaven, standing, uh, excuse me, having a drawn sword in his hand. Do you see the second advent there? Though he's not on a horse. Second advent, Revelation 19 says he has a sword. There it is. Now he's chastising Israel here. When he comes back in second advent, he's going to be chastising the nations and helping Israel. His drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Again, 2 Samuel 24, 1. He's angry with Israel. Then David and the elders of Israel who were clothed in sackcloth already at the pestilence starts, these, these get in, David gets in sackcloth. He doesn't get his royal uh, attire. He doesn't get his crown. He gets in sackcloth because his people are dying. He has come to the realize that God has chosen one of them. And to him, it looks like before he, before he sees the angel, it looks like the pestilence. Now he sees the angel. He definitely knows. And he fell upon their faces. They're going to worship God. And David said unto God, there's no Gad, there's no Nathan. David turns to God on his knees with his face in the dirt. That's like that man that came for me. He, he knelt down to God. He wouldn't even lift up his head. He said, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what David is right now. Is it not that I, I mean, excuse me, is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Well, look at that. David is not playing the blame game. Adam, did you, well, she made me do it. Well, did you eat, he made, the snurf it made me, David, it's God. These people are dying. Here's a number for you, David. 70,000. Lord, it's my fault. It is my fault those people are dying. It's my fault that you're standing here in Jerusalem right now. It's my fault. Even I, it is that I, I, it is that have sinned. Kind of weird sense of structure that we've been brought up to have. I'm the one that sinned, God. And done evil indeed. But 2 Samuel 24, 1 says he's angry with Israel. Say, he allowed Satan to David to number the people. Go ahead. Have Satan. Have, uh, get mixed up. have David go number the people, Satan. So I can have a consequence to get the people that I'm angry with. And David's repentant. But as for these sheep. John chapter 10, it, the Israelites. What have they done? I don't know. You want to say it again? 2 Samuel 24, 1. God's angry with them. Sin. Let thy hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, O Lord my God, in deep admiration. Better not do an OMG. You do. You better repent of your sins. I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and my father's house. He's almost asking, like, Lord, that, that option number three, can you put it on me? Can you get it off the people of Israel and put it on me and my, my father's house? David said, listen, that plague, get it off Israel, put it on me. 
Now, is that not Jesus Christ? Father, you're going to die in your sins. Well, what can we do? Put all those sins on me. But not on thy people. That they should be plagued. Now, is that not a good leader? Is that not a godly leader for a nation? You know, if God came to any ruler of any nation and said, listen, I can touch your people or I can touch you, what do you think he's going to say? Them. Go after them. Leave me alone. David said, Lord, go after me. I'm worthy. And that's what Jesus Christ said upon the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what David's saying. Lord, forgive them. 2 Samuel 24. 2 Samuel 24. And we'll do verse 1 to start off the show. 2 Samuel 24, 1. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. There's the key phrase. And he moved David. Well, Chronicles 21 said Satan. You know what Satan said? <laughs> Let me at him. Okay, go ahead. And he used David. As in Job chapter 1, he used the Sabinians and the Chaldeans. 2 Samuel 24, verse number... Oh, wait a minute. I'll turn the page too quick. Uh, where do I want to start? I did want to turn the page. Uh, verse 10, 24, 10. And David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. Here's David repenting. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done foolishly. It matches 1 Chronicles. David's repent. He's going to repent again. For when David was in the morning, for David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, I, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. To thee, David. So Gad came to David and told him, said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in the land? So that would touch David, no food in the land. Did you see did you see an error or a problem there? Now you gotta study your problem. I mean, you don't need to go to the internet. Let's look at first hold your place there. Let's look at first Chronicles 21. Now I'm gonna show you an error, and I'll show you the, the end of the error. 1 Chronicles 21, verse 12. I'll be honest to show you. 1 Chronicles 21, 12. Either three years famine, 2 Samuel 24, verse 13. Shall seven years famine. Uh oh, we got a big problem here. One says seven years, the other one says three years. There's a contradiction in the Bible. There it is, right there. Give it to you. All right. So let's go over to 2 Samuel 21. 2 Samuel 21, verse number 9. Uh, that's 9. Or is that a 4? Verse 1. Verse 4. Oh, where is it? Nine, is it verse 1? Okay, that, that gives us a period of time. Uh, verse 1. We want 9 and 10 after. Then there was famine in the days of David, three years. So 3 plus, let's see, Chronicles says 3 plus... Three plus three is six. Samuel said seven, so we're missing a year. 
verse 9 and 10 of 2 Samuel 21. And he delivered unto them the hands of given nice, and they hanged them, them on the hill before the Lord. And there fell all seven together, and they were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, the beginning of barley harvest. So this would add about another month. And then at the time that David numbered Israel, and that would have been about nine, nine months. With that extra time that of the well of, of Rizma unto the harvest time, and then David adding the numbers of the children of Israel, that whole period of time would have been four years, added to three years, you would have what we have the seven years. That's that's the problem. There's no problem. Second Samuel 24, 13, seven years, that's total. You can have seven years of famine. You've already had three years of famine. I'll add to it. No problem. There was a little, little delay of time there while he numbered the people. All right, I can say with 24, verse 13. Shall come unto thee in thy land. So it would be only Israel who God's angry with. Or will thou flee three months as you did before uh, Saul, before thy enemies while they pursue thee? That's the same like everything that's happening here is happening to David already. You can continue with the famine or you can go about what you did with King Saul. How's that? Or that three days pestilence in thy land, Israel. Now advise me. Now that, that's the first time advice shows up in the Bible there. Advise me. Gad, you tell me what David said. And see what answer I shall get return to him, God, that sent me. And David said to Gad, I am a straight straight. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord. I want the mercies of God. I want God to answer. I don't want to make this decision. And there are some decisions as human beings we ought not to make. In the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. Let me not fall in the hand of man. His mercy, he, he's, some men are merciless. You would not want to trust Adolf Hitler in a, in a Jewish nursing home. Or a Hebrew nursery. That's not a man. You would not want to trust Abraham with your wife. And David says, I want to trust in the Lord. But notice how the attacks of verse 13 is upon the land. Not the Moabite land. Not Egypt. But the land. 2 Samuel 24, 1. He's mad at Israel. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel. From the morning, even to the time appointed, and there died of the people of Dan, that's north, even to Bathsheba, that's south, 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, now look at that purpose. That afternoon, the purpose of that angel was to destroy Jerusalem and the United Nations and Arabians and the, all of them would have loved and congratulated and get yay. You see how angry God is with those Jews right now? He told that to Moses one time. Moses, you leave me alone. I'll just wipe them all out and I'll make you a nation. Now that's getting God angry. That's the guy who said, I'll never leave thee for safety. I'm going to wipe them all out. Upon Jerusalem destroyed, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. And now thy hand, uh, and stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Arna, the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smoked the people and said, Lo, I have sinned. You want a good leader? There's a leader in the nation saying, I have done the sin. It is me. I'm the leader. I'm the king. It is my fault, God. You know why God forgave David for all his sins? Look at that heart. 
from day one with Adam and Eve, they blamed each other. And I have done wickedly. He's not covering up his sins. But these sheep, John chapter 10, Israel, what have they done? Well, <laughs> go back to 2 Samuel 24, 1. Let thy hand, uh-oh, uh-oh. Look at verse 16. When the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem, that is the angel of the Lord, right? David says, let thy hand. David says, that hand that belongs to that angel of the Lord is your hand, God. That angel of the Lord has to be Jesus Christ. There's no one equal to God ever. God says in Isaiah, I'm looking around, there's no other God but me. And when David says, your hand let go upon Jerusalem, that, is, that angel has his hand. That angel is God, it's Jesus. I pray thee against me. Be against me, he says, and against my father's house. Now that did not break God's heart right then and there. And that's not a picture of Jesus Christ. David's saying, Whatever your anger is, it's my fault. Now, Jesus Christ cannot say that. Because Jesus Christ was sinless. But Jesus Christ can say, Father, laid them sins of them upon me. I'll take the sins. I didn't do it. That's the difference between David and Jesus. I didn't do those sins. There was no sin in him. But he bared our sins on the cross, the Bible says. David sinned, whatever that number was. Yes, he did sin. But look at whatever God is mad at Israel is, and he's mad at him, 24-1. David says, hey, tell you what, God, put that all on my account. Put it on me and my family. Now, next time, Lord willing, we're going to look at the greatest title deed ever to be, title deed ever to be. And people who do not believe the Bible, I don't care what you, you're a fool. You're going to stand before God that wrote the Bible one day. Those that believe the Bible, the greatest title deed ever to be title deed is going to be what we're going to read, Lord willing, next time.